This video is brought to you by Harago.com, a trades-only platform helping you find the right job or the right candidate. Harago.com, best in trade. I'm responding to a call that there's some noise coming from some refrigeration piping. Now, when you listen to it, it sounds like the pressure is changing constantly. Now, when I hook up the gauges, you can't maybe see it right now, but it looks like the TX valve is hunting because the low pressure keeps jumping up and down, down to 59, up to 67, 68. You can't see it doing it right now, but doing it quite a bit and I found this condenser fan doing this so we're gonna have to fix this problem first before we continue on with the rest of the troubleshooting okay I have the fan out but the plastic shroud that York is actually calling an orifice like you can see on that one there is down and broken into a bunch of pieces. Now, this could affect airflow potentially, not having this. And yeah, we could probably build one out of sheet metal or something like that, but this unit is supposed to be replaced very, very soon. And we're doing this job as economical as possible. All right, and the only reason we're fixing this now, this late in the summer, is because we still have a little bit of hot weather left. And because this, the way the building operates, there's a steam boiler with rads and some of the suites actually air conditioning in the winter because of the, the the heat output from the radiators and the perimeters so some of the internal offices still need to be air conditioned so we need to run this during the winter a little bit so we're going to put this fan motor in and without without the orifice and we're going to see how it works and worst case scenario yeah we might have to manufacture our own out of sheet metal but like I said, this is economical to get us through the winter and we might be replacing this or we should be replacing this before the next cooling season. The new fan motor's in, it's been tested, amp draw's been checked and uh, we're gonna go downstairs and we're gonna run test this machine and check for the sound in the space while we check some pressures with the smart probes. So what I've done here is I've jumped out Y1 and Y2 only because the unloader is controlled by a call for second stage. I don't want it loading and unloading while I'm doing my checks. I want it fully loaded up. So I've jumped out Y1 and Y2 while I'm checking everything out. So I don't know if you can hear that noise, but it seems like we're flowing too much refrigerant through the metering device. And my readings seem to jive up with that because our superheat is very low and our subcooling was actually just down around four. So I'm gonna adjust the TX valve and see if we can get rid of this noise and get these numbers more in check. Okay, here's the TX valve, and whenever you see a TX valve with a flat cap on it, it means it's non-adjustable. I can't adjust this, so we're probably gonna to have to go back and price out a new valve because this valve is overfeeding and I can't do anything about it. Okay, so let me recap and go through a couple things that you didn't see in the video. For one, the entire compressor was sweating. Now, you usually only see that when you overcharge a system. You overcharge a system or you flood an evaporator because now there's too much refrigerant in the evap. The air can't absorb enough heat from the refrigerant, so the refrigerant goes back to the compressor relatively colder than it should be colder for lack of a better term now as it goes back colder the entire compressor sweats okay the other thing is that during testing most of the testing the subcooling was down below five now I know in the video it was up around eight but for most of the testing it was down below five and we had low superheat low subcooling that valve was was stuck open okay the other thing that you couldn't hear really, um, and it was happening more the day prior to me making the video before I changed that condenser fan motor, we could hear the piping in the office. It was like it was building pressure and releasing it, building it and releasing it. Like that TX valve was opening and closing, opening and closing, trying to find its spot. Okay, so let me give full disclosure here. About five years ago, that same compressor was replaced. 
okay? We replaced that compressor, and when we replaced it, we found that the TX valve was doing the exact same thing it was doing during this video. And that was the cause of the compressor failure. So we went and changed the TX valve, which in hindsight should have been should have been an adjustable TX, but we just put in what the manufacturer um, recommended for that unit. But we should have put in an adjustable. I don't know if an adjustable would have helped in this situation. Maybe, who knows? But we've had this problem before. And the other thing is when we fixed a leak in that unit earlier in the year, there was black stuff going through the sight glass in my gauges. That system's old. It's had a ton of repairs done to it. And there's probably all kinds of junk in that system and it's probably slammed up in the TX valve. And I guarantee you it's stuck in a spot. Anyway, guys, that's the video there. That's, that's the wrap up. That was the issue and that's what caused it. Unfortunately, we're not gonna get to change the TX valve again because that system is gonna be replaced but anyway, guys, it's a learning experience for me and you. Like, subscribe to the video, guys. Comment, please, if you enjoy the content. Happy HVACing.